Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Let's keep banging out this clamp project. So first of all, uh, thank you so much interest in the giveaway. I feel a little guilty. I um, meant it to be a raffle, not necessarily we'd give everybody a clamp. So check the video description below to see if your YouTube name is there. And if it is, you won um, a set of these blanks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give away some of these and then we're also gonna offer them for sale. So it'll be two of the plasma cut long pieces and two of the short pieces. And then we have also made a little fixture that we'll go over which we will um, center mark or center punch the whole location so you can finish uh, the rest of the plasma parts and then turn the parts as well. Once we get the clamp fully made and together, we'll also give a few of those away. I wanna make sure I'm happy with it first and we'll also, uh, I think, offer a parts kit for sale so you can sort of put it together yourself. So again, check the video description if you want to buy a pair of these blanks or to see if you won. So here's where we left off. Our clamp works, but the question is, are we really going to make it like this? We need to do some design for manufacturing. And here's the thing, I'm not a great designer. I'm, I would much rather analyze something than to create something from scratch. So believe it or not, this stuff is actually kind of hard for me. So what I do is I just make it. I just, I just start creating the CAD as you saw. And now we realize we've got some problems. Um, so this is a little insight into sort of how I think. These two pins, the role of these two pins is to hold the clamps spaced apart so that the rest of the joints can move freely. So they can't really be uh, straight walled, things like that. And we also have a problem with how we fasten this piece uh, here into this end cap. How does it rotate, but also transfer the, the force as it pushes and uh, pulls on the clamp arm. So let's fix that stuff. Easiest way to do it, let's now model it exactly how we're going to do that with McMaster car downloaded parts. Super easy. We just pulled up some fasteners and so forth. Part numbers are in the video description. And if we click on, this is a one inch screw, product detail, we can go down here and do SolidWorks, save it. And you just upload that file with the upload button in Fusion, and we've got that, say, right here. So take this one here, right click, insert into current design. That puts our fastener right there. That's fine. I like to actually have it away from the model, like so, and just click OK. So I'm going to hit J for joint, continue, and now pay attention to where I click. Joints are easy once you realize that. I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to click on that center part. And then the second component, actually I changed this to a revolute here. Second component, hold, let the mouse hover here and hold down control and click on that center coin there. Look, perfect. Click OK. Now I've got that fastener where I want it. We can still move everything. Insert the nut. If I want to, you don't have to do this, but you can rotate it to the correct orientation, like so. J for joint. Again, if I hold here, I get my center coin. Click that. And I'll do this one. So I actually want to get rid of the screw. I'm going to fasten it to the face of the part. So I'm going to un-light bulb the screw. Let the mouse hover here. Control, click there. There's my fastener. Click OK. I can turn the screw back on. And that shows me, OK, screw sticking out a little. I could use a washer. I could shorten it up, but um, should be fine, which is, which is perfect. For these, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to replace it with uh, the fasteners. I'll do that here, fast forward. And then we're going to add a sleeve of tubing that'll act as a spacer. That way we can clamp down um, between those two screws and maintain a constant uh, fixed width between our clamps. A couple of Fusion 360 tips. See how these have this little chain link? 
It's because we inserted a separate file into this design and right now that prevents us from exporting this file which we do to post on our Patreon site so the folks that support us on Patreon can download this whole model and by the way we really appreciate it. It's one of our goals for 2016 is to try to grow our Patreon audience and what it is is it's a dollar a month or more but a dollar a month minimum to support our channel you get access to monthly live video talks. We post a lot of CAD files. We post some pretty cool behind the scenes footage of what's going on in the shop and we're also really responsive on any emails we get in from folks with questions. So if you're able or willing or interested please do consider supporting us on Patreon. So what we do right now is right click and just choose break link. That'll remove the external reference of those files uh, which in this case is what we want. We're going to create that spacer now so right click new component. I'll rename it to spacer, so activate it and then I'm going to hit C for circle, click on this face right here and we'll just say it's a, uh, we bought some material that's 0.205 uh, I think, oops, Point two. and 3 eighths on the OD. 375. Rotate my view here and I can now hit Q for press pull and look I can select this and drag it up to 0.8. That's my ID I believe. Yep. Click OK. Go back to the main, activate the main thing and that's in the right spot but it, obviously we can still move it away so hit Shift J for an as built joint. This will be, could be rigid or revolute uh, we'll just do rigid, it doesn't really matter. And I'll click on this and the screw, click OK, and now that should be in place. Now this is really a great example of why I don't feel intimidated taking the time to do this. First of all, you can get to the point where you're pretty quick with it and take a look. Now we realize as we close this clamp, if that spacer were too big, we would start to have interference with our piece of threaded rod. That's really important because it's a bummer to go through something like this and then realize you goofed on something silly. You don't have to do every little thing. For instance, do I need to put the spacer out here? No, it's okay. We know what that's going to look like. Now the big one is fixing this piece and the piece of all thread. It's, I find Fusion is a little bit difficult to go ahead and edit something that you've already done a lot of work after and that's, um, that's not okay. I think I need to learn a little bit more about that and maybe there needs to be some more things done with, by the Fusion uh, software team etc but what I'm gonna do is actually delete this handle and start over activate the blind pin and here's what we're going to do I bought this piece of all thread already cut to size from McMaster Carp just the easiest way to do it and we're gonna turn down this end to uh, to fit through and then put a thread the end and put a nut on it so that's gonna turn this piece into uh, a through hole so if we take a look and edit this sketch, it's going to be a quarter inch and we want to extrude it all the way through. So if we edit this feature, I can drag down and we get a joint error, that's okay. Great. Go back to our main part, new component, all thread we'll call it and actually I forgot, go back to our main thing and now we can actually import that piece of all thread from McMaster, isn't that crazy? It's so funny, right here, insert into current design and again just for kicks we can rotate it 90 Click okay now I want to edit this and so again by breaking the link I sort of move it into this model and lets me edit it in this model where what I want to do break link activate it C for circle click on that face 0.25 and 0.5 doesn't matter. I'm just trying to extrude. So hit Q for press pull, and then we will extrude up. Just take a look at. 
I don't really even know, negative 0.8, say, maybe. That gives us a turned end, and go back to here. Okay. J for joint. We, okay, now think about this. Revolute, for sure, and I basically want to make, this is going to be the shoulder. So this face here that we've created, not the, not the turned thing, but the actual face is going to push against uh, the, the pin. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of, I'm experimenting here, is if I hold my mouse, see there, I get that um, sketch, that circle there. If I hold down control, I can select that point, and then let's see, um, can I select, there we go, it's exactly what I want. I'm selecting the coin at the top center of that hole. Perfect, see that? So we're revolving, animate it again here. We're revolving at that location, click OK. And did I say quarter inch? I think, so. okay, so now let's see if, um, we need to put a nut on it, so let's do this. Right click, isolate, create thread. We'll say size auto, okay, click on this, and we'll say it's quarter 20. We'll actually model it, and we'll say, instead of the full length, we'll just say, um, let's see here, can I flip the direction? 0.25, um, point, never done this to be honest with you, yeah, kind of cool, right? Something like that, just to show a, thre a threaded end to that, cool, unisolate, Right click and choose unisolate. I know that's off the screen, sorry. Perfect. I've got a quarter 20 fastener. Insert into design. By the way, I always forget to mention, for folks that um, want to see this going more slowly, I believe on YouTube in the bottom right, you can choose to play it at, e at either faster or actually 0.5 speed. And if I will rotate it just for kicks. And I'll do J for joint. And I'm going to do, let's see here. Let's put it on there. Okay, so I kind of want to get the rod out of here. So let's turn it off with the light bulb. Because I want to really put that fastener right there. See that? Because that's how it's really going to work, because that fastener is going to thread up against this piece. So click OK, turn my screw back on. Now, this is really important because I need to make sure I could actually turn that fastener. Uh, it's not going to interfere, it's not too wide. So I think that'll be OK. Last thing we'll do today motion link. Awesome. I think this is so cool. So we set up in the earlier video the wrong joint that will let us use the motion link. So see how this works. The, the, the threaded piece of all thread goes through the threaded nut at the correct orientation. But the reason that happens is not because we've told it that the threaded rod is, goes inside of this, but rather if we expand our joints here. We had this joint here called shaft into threaded pin, but if we look at that joint, and we animate it, so right click and choose animate. It's actually, we just aligned the two pins, not the shaft. Um, so we, we're, we're gonna delete that joint. And now what will happen is we can move our piece of all thread outside of that joint. Now let's create a new joint. And we're going to do cylindrical. And I wanna do a cylindrical joint 
between the piece of all thread and the threaded pin at the top here. So first thing I'm going to do, remember the first one you click is the one that moves. So I'm going to actually just click the center coin of the piece of all thread right here. By the way, when you screw up a joint, just cancel it and start over. Seriously, it's, it's, I don't think it's very good at fixing it midstream. So I want to do cylindrical. Pick your joint type first again as well. So let's just pick the component, and then we'll pick the location on the component. Okay, hold on. Try that again. Sorry. J for joint, cylindrical, select location on component to move, this one. Okay, now if I let it hover, it says second location, select location on second component. So I'm going to hide my piece of all thread, and again, I'm going to hold, there you go, that's exactly what I want. I want the center coin on that threaded thing, and if we... Now what's it want? Okay, I'll put it back on, and I want to say animate. Perfect. You can see it's sliding up and down as it's revolving, which is how it works in the real world. Click OK. It, okay, so it reversed it. I don't know why. No big deal. Go into our joint right here. Right click, edit, and I'll just flip it. Click OK. That's almost like a goof on Fusion, whatever. Okay, we're back in business. Assemble, motion link, continue. Okay, so here's a good example where we actually want to capture, uh, cancel. Here I want to actually capture the position. So snapshot it. Now it's not going to ask us that question. Motion link. So what are the joints that we want to do? Well, we want to use, for sure, the one we just created. And then we also want to use, in fact, you know what, I need to go look. Is it this one? Hold on. What was our joint that caused us to revolve? Animate joint. Nope, that was the nut. It's actually really helpful to uh, um, label your joints. So this one would be rev um, all thread. And this is the only cylinder coin I think I've got, so that's easier. Assemble motion link, cylindrical, and all thread. So take a look. Slide the Z and rotate the Z. Doesn't look like anything, that's okay. Click OK. Now, it's hard to see, but it's working. Let me put a handle back on it real quick. Okay, caps on there, watch. As we move the handle open and close, it rotates the top. You can also turn this, it's actually a little hard to do on the computer. Um, and you see, oh, there you go. Yeah, you can see it moving. Now, take a look. If we right click or if we expand the joints and we go to our last, our motion link and edit that, the distance is the pitch of the screw. So we're using a 16 uh, TPI screw. So 1 divided by 16 gives us the correct pitch. So you can actually see the resolution of, of that. And, uh, you can also exaggerate it. So, oops, if we edit it and we said it's you know 0.8 for every turn it's going to be real extreme just to get an idea you can see how much more it moves like so hope you enjoyed folks let me know if you have comments or questions uh, if you have enjoyed this i really do appreciate thumbs up or commenting below take care see you soon i'm just using the path pilot Conversational, super easy, makes quick work of it. Yeah, look at that, awesome.